Hi, Washington families. This is Sarah McMaster, your assistant principal, and I am going to talk to you today about our arrival and dismissal procedures, um, recess procedures, as well as our student screening. So I want all families to know that our website has been updated with our bell schedule and arrival and dismissal procedures. Every time we make a change, we will put it on the website so that all of our families have access to it. So today, I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over some of the documents that have been uploaded onto our website. You can absolutely print them, you can download them, and I highly recommend that you do so, so that you are ready to go when your students come back to campus. We are really looking forward to having all great levels back on campus. Um, so first things first, let's talk a little bit about what our campus looks like right now. So we've got four arrival zones, and these are also the dismissal zones as well, um, in the front of the school. And then effective February 24th, when third grade returns, we will also have the Felton Gate open for third graders and third graders who may have a younger sibling to enter campus this way. When your child is at recess, they will stay in a specific area and the areas will rotate. Um, but we need to make sure that your child is only exposed to the students in their cohort so that in case we ever had to do any contact tracing, um, we would know exactly who was with who. So, you know, this is what our recess is going to look like. And we have cones out. Our new supervisors have been wonderful. Our PE teacher is coming on campus and he's teaching the kids how to do socially distant games. Um, so recess has been fun. and It's been one of the highlights of having kids back on campus. And we can't wait for third through fifth grade to be able to play on the playground together as well. So here's our map in case you are curious about what um, the different zones and areas of our campus moving forward. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about arrival procedures. Kindergarten through second grade, we've done an amazing job so far with our health screening and our drop offs. It's become it's gotten very efficient and we're looking forward to continuing that efficiency when third through fifth grades come um, in the next couple weeks. Third through fifth grade arrival time, the window starts at eight o'clock. Third through fifth grade students are gonna enter through zone four or at the Felton gate. The gate will open at 8.05. There will be a designated staff member there to complete the same health screening at the back of the school that we do at the front of the school. If you are a, um, a family that has a third through fifth grader and you have younger siblings in kindergarten through second grade, you are welcome to drop all your students off at that location. They must, um, the third through fifth grade older sibling is going to help us out by being an awesome explorer and walking their younger sibling to their classroom and then going directly to their own classroom. Parents, what I need to say next is incredibly important. You must be present at arrival. If a student walks to campus by themselves and they are not with an adult who can verify that the screening questions have been answered and be there while we take your child's temperature, we will not let the student enter campus. We will call you and you will have to come to campus to verify to us that you've answered the screening questions and be there when we take your child's temperature. This is important. I know that might be a shift for some of our um, families who have older students who maybe the kids walk to school independently. Unfortunately, right now during these times, we cannot have that happen. At dismissal, kindergarten through second grade, your dismissal zones and times will stay the same. Third through fifth grade will be dismissed at 1245. Third through fifth graders will leave through zone four. Um, the 1245 dismissal time will allow our third through fifth grade students who have a sibling to go to their sibling's classroom and pick up their sibling. And then if they are going home, um, you know, if they are walking their sibling home with them, they will be able to do so and exit campus. Um, the Felton Gate will also be open at that time for any siblings who will be walking home through the back, um, siblings and students who will be walking home through the back end of our campus. We need parents to notify their teacher of what their dismissal plan is. If your child is, if you are a parent of a third through fifth grader and your child is going to be exiting through the Felton Gate or walking home independently, we need to know that. So you need to reach out to your child's teacher to let them know that. Here are our recess times. There is an embedded, there will be an embedded snack time into your child's day. So we didn't list the exact snack time on here because our teachers are finding that 
Some of them may have their snack at a different time other than recess. That's fine with us. Um, what you need to know about snack and recess is that before snack and before recess, your child will wash their hands. After snack and after recess, your child will wash their hands. So a large part of our classroom routines and procedures right now involve washing hands. And we want you to know that um, you know, before your child eats, they're washing their hands. After they eat, they're washing their hands. Before your child leaves the classroom to play, they're washing their hands. And after and upon return to the classroom from recess, they are washing their hands. Moving down on this part, portion of our webpage, I also want to highlight to you that we have our cohort calendar up on the website. So please make sure that you either put a notification in your phone or your own calendar or teach your child to do that um, as well so that they know which days they are attending for in-person learning. I recommend that you print this out, put it on your fridge so that you are ready to go and you know exactly what days your child should come to campus. If you bring your child accidentally to campus on a non-cohort day, unfortunately, we will have to call you and you'll have to come pick them back up. So we want to make sure that families know exactly when they should be bringing their child to campus. Okay, we are going to go back to our school webpage, and I want to show you one more thing on our webpage. So on this part of our webpage right here under Parent Information and Resources, we have our screening questions. And we also have a very comprehensive document. Um, this is our, these are our reopening protocols for a safe and health, healthy return of K-5 students and staff at Washington. Basically, all the information that I just went over for you is in this long comprehensive document. But if you're curious about how often the bathrooms are being cleaned or what some of our new protocols and procedures would be, everything is in here. So I highly recommend that if you have questions, check out this document. Um, if you have continued questions after you've read the document, please reach out to myself, Dr. Galan, our front office, your child's teacher, and we will happily answer them. This document that I'm about to show you is incredibly important. Every morning prior to bringing your child to school, you must actively answer these screening questions. We do not require at Washington that you show us your green screen before you bring your child to campus, although a lot of parents have. The questions on the, on the um, staff screener are the same as the questions on the elementary student screener. So if you have that app um, or the website loaded onto your phone and it helps you remember, to do the screening questions and actively think about them by using your phone, you're more than welcome to do so. However, you do not have to show us the green screen to enter our campus. What you do need to do is verify to us that you have answered no to all of these questions. It's incredibly important that if you answer yes to any of the statements, do not bring your child to campus. Um, it's totally okay if you answer yes, Just have your child stay home, log them on for um, remote learning, notify the classroom teacher, notify our front office, and we will move forward with communicating with you your next steps um, and what you need to do before you would bring your child back to campus. Um, so when you come to campus and you're dropping your child off, you are going to, we're gonna ask you, have you answered the screening questions? And you're gonna say, yes, I've answered the screening questions. And then the follow-up question to that would be, and you know, did you answer no to all of our screening questions? And then you would say yes. If you answer yes, just stay home and contact us so that we can follow up with you. After we've asked you if you've done the screening questions, we will also take your child's temperature. If your child has a measured temperature of 100.4 or above, that we will not let them enter campus. What we will do is we will have you pull over in your car, or if you walk to school, kind of just wait on the side. And what we'll do is we'll just have you have your child wait for about 10 minutes. And then we will recheck your child's temperature to make sure that maybe the thermometer that took the temperature wasn't running hot or anything like that. Or sometimes parents have the heat on in the car. Um, you know, the hustle and the bustle is to get out of the car and their child might, you know, have a little bit of an elevated temp. So we, what we want to do is we want to have a double check to make sure that to confirm that the child has an actual measure of fever, we'll use a different thermometer to check it um, prior to um, you know, sending you home. So that's a little bit of information about what's happening at Washington. And again, I remind I want to remind all parents to make sure that if you have questions, 
um, reach out, but we also are trying really hard to keep our school website as updated as possible so that um, this is the place where you go to find out any information. One more plug before we end this screencast. If you, if your child is absent, go ahead and just report that absence online. Mrs. Decker, our wonderful um, attendance secretary will follow up with you. Um, we're looking forward to having our third through fifth graders back on campus within the next few weeks. And um, it's been just absolutely wonderful to have our K2 students back um, for the past few weeks. So if you need anything, reach out, have an awesome day, and we will see you soon.